All right, so let's move to our next subject here, which is Jeff Gazer. You wrote this up. This is an OCZ drive that is NVMe, which is yes, fancy. Not- so, so explain what well, this has multiple new interface and protocol things, right? Uh, well, they're not really new so much as just this is kind of the next generation of, of PCI Express drives. So for a while, PCI Express drives were available, but they use this old AHCI protocol that's been around since SATA drives first came out. Um, so that's that's fine for mechanical storage, but it's not really built to scale up with the kind of performance that modern SSDs can offer. Uh, so the replacement for AHCI is, is NVM Express, otherwise known as NVMe, and it was designed specifically for SSDs super scalable it's designed to sort of last for years um and modern ssds are actually just kind of scratching the surface of what it can do uh so this drive is a it's a, a pci express drive it has four lanes of, of gen 3 bandwidth and it's got a, a pmc sierra controller so this is not an in-house design from ozz this is very much an enterprise oriented controller uh, the controller actually has 16 nan channels which is double what you find in a, in a typical ssd controller um has one of these SFF8639 interfaces, which is basically like a cabled PCI Express interface. So the drive itself is actually a two and a half inch uh, drive. It's 15 millimeters thick, which is sort of the thickness of what some of the, the enterprise class uh, mini SSDs are. Intel 750 series, the uh, their sort of desktop version of their da- data center drive is the same form factor. Um, and it's, you know, it's, this is OCZ's, I guess, kind of answer to the data center equivalent of Intel 750 series. Uh, so there are a couple of different flavors for uh, of it. There's a Z6000 uh, series, which is made for sort of read intensive workloads. It has a lower endurance rating than the Z6300 series, which is made for kind of mixed read and write environments. Um, right now, the drives go up to 3.2 terabytes. Uh, there's also a version they're coming out with that's going to be 6.4 uh, terabytes, uh, although that's not available yet. And they're also working on kind of an add-in card version, so it'll be kind of like a, a half-height uh, PCI Express card that's also coming later as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a high-end server and, and workstation drive. One of the neater things about this is it actually has a configurable thermal envelope, so you can set the drive to perform at 15 watts, 20 watts or hmm. 25 watts, depending on what kind of enclosure you put it in. So if you're using it in a, in a really densely packed server, you might want to dial it back a little bit, um, and you maybe give up a little bit of performance to, to keep uh, temperatures down. This also has sort of thermal throttling built in, so it won't actually overheat. It'll just you know scale back performance if temperatures get too high. Um, hmm. So it's an interesting looking drive. The, the performance figures are you know appropriately ridiculous. Um, you can go, you know, 2,900 megabits or megabytes per second for sequential reads, <laughs> almost 2,000 for sequential writes. Uh, the interesting thing is they're claiming over 700,000 random read IOPS, which is higher than we've seen um, for sort of the equivalent Intel uh, drives, although the random write rate isn't quite as good. Uh, so this does seem to be something that will perform better in more of a read-intensive environment. So we a comment from the chat. Uh, Alpha Cheese says, "I'm looking forward to a review showing this not doing much that that much better than a BX100 in a desktop workload." <laughs> um, That's probably what's going to happen with something like this. Yeah, we know these are faster. We they, literally faster hard or, or SSDs exist than than what you could buy, and like you can measure them, and they will transfer data faster. They're better at randomized access. They're 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 not necessarily faster in uh, access latencies, but access latencies are. Like extremely well, they are small. they are kind of faster in the sense that they can deliver the really fast access latencies for longer, and maybe you're talking about like a microsecond or two faster than right. But if you're if you're sitting there using a system with this in it, it is not going to blow your hair back any more than a pretty good mid range SSD that you plug into a SATA port because the software that controls all this is kind of doesn't take advantage um and and games and things like that are not written to be like well we'll just stream in this data now we don't need to load another level um they may be at some point in the future and then you want the faster drive but that future is a long way off isn't it it seems like it well and there's also this kind of problem where you know a game developer is going to target the lowest common denominator so in the same way that games are kind of bound by what 
you know, a, a large segment of the market has. And for a while, it used to be, you know, game developers would have to make a game run at least half, you know, possible to run the game on Intel integrated graphics. Even if you assume people have SSDs, you're probably assuming that they're going to have a SATA drive, which in terms of sequential speeds is going to be much, you know, like a, a quarter or less the speed of something like this. Um, so I think we'll get, we'll get to a point, hopefully not too long from now, where people start, developers start making assumptions about there being an SSD present in the system and maybe they're, they're being either accessed or the ability to to read sequentially much faster or to, to have that benefit in, in random access times. But the jump then, or the, the gap between a SATA drive and a PCI Express drive is, is fairly large. And I think you're going to have a, a situation where so much of the market is on SATA SSDs that uh, to sort of take advantage of those will be one step and then to move beyond those and to actually see a tangible benefit from something that's PCI Express. Um, you know, we may have to wait even longer. Yeah. <clears throat> well, we'll see. I, 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 it would be nice. It'd be nice if we find some things that, like, okay, this is clearly better. And there's it's 4K really, video editing. That's there the you answer go. for it. <laughs> I mean, and if you're working with really large files, like if you're uh, in content creation work or dealing with big media files, the fact that you can read data more quickly or transfer files more quickly does have benefits. It's it's just not kind of that jump from mechanical drives to solid state drives. And it's not something that, you know, kind of your average desktop user is going to notice like they will moving from a mechanical drive to an SSD. I saw an interesting thing that was just a link on Twitter the other day that uh, Coding Horror, who was Jeff Atwood, who was on the show some time ago, linked to. And it was just a guy who was doing some type of like graph sorting or some crazy algorithm and it's a hard computing problem and what he, what he was doing was instead of like bringing stuff into memory and working on it and then putting it back out or whatever i think it's because of big data sets he was just accessing the ssds um to do this work and was able to be way faster than prior methods just being able to assume storage is super fast and really large we'll just do this and i think treating uh Solid state storage, like what it is, which is a, a slightly slower form of memory that's near to the the system, instead of something that's kind of this alien, super slow spinning platter thing, um, is where you get those advantages uh, in, in performance in the future, and um, they'll come, but it, it may take some rearchitecting of file systems and software in a pretty fundamental way. So.